is the part you cannot miss anything on. You'll have to do the brake test without missing anything. So the tester will usually tell you, go ahead, go out to your truck, start your truck up, make sure your air is built up, and I'll be out in a minute. Sometimes he'll actually walk out with you, depending on if he's busy or not at the time. So when he, when you first crawl in the truck, the very first thing you want to do is you want to put your seatbelt on. Because if you don't put your seatbelt on there in this part, he will fail you. So make sure you have your seatbelt on. <clears throat> you want to start your truck up when you first crawl in it, make sure you have 120 pounds of air to start your brake test. So it's got 100 right here. That next mark past 100 is the 120 mark. You want to make sure you have at least that to start your brake test. All right, and then you're gonna, the tester's gonna probably talk to you for just a little bit, and then he's gonna tell you to go ahead and start. So when he tells you to start, you're, the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna tell him, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start with my brake test, and I'm gonna do my tug test first. To do my tug test, I'm going to release my tractor brake to test my trailer brake. You have to put your foot on the brake to put it in gear, otherwise it will not go in gear. You're gonna give it a little tug. I'll say my truck did not move, which indicates that it's working properly. I'm going to now release my trailer brake to test my tractor brake. I'll we'll put it back in gear. I'll we'll give it a little tug. My truck did not move, which indicates that it's working properly. All right. I'm going to now test my service brake. To do so, I would roll forward three to five miles per hour. I would put my foot firmly on the brake. My truck should stop, which indicates my service brake is working properly, and my steering wheel did not pull to the left or to the right, which would indicate a brake out of adjustment. And at this time, I would also check my speedometer to make sure that it was working correctly. The speedometer is not part of your brake test, so if you forget that part, he's not gonna fail you on your brake test. It's just to check your speedometer, you have to do it while you're rolling, right? So you have to check, you just wanna mention that you check your speedometer during that part. And then you want to mention it again while you're doing your end cap just to make sure he gives you credit for it. All right, so now I've done my tug test. I've tested my service brake. So now I'm going to do my applied pressure test and pump down. To do so, I would shut my truck off and I would turn my key back on so my gauges work. You're going to put your foot lightly on the brake and you don't have to tell him that, just do it so your truck don't roll because you're going to release both your tractor and your trailer brake and you're going to pause for 10 or 15 seconds and let your air chambers fill up. And the gauge is messing up again. All right, so now that my air chambers are filled, I'm going to put my foot firmly on the brake. I should not lose more than four pounds in one minute. Will you time me, please? The tester will time you and then he will tell you your minutes up and then you're going to say i did not lose more than four pounds in one minute which indicates i don't have a leak in, which means i don't have a leak in my service lines <clears throat> i'm going to now pump my brakes to assimilate an air leak and at 60 pounds my warning indicator and light should come on all right, my warning indicator and buzzer, my warning indicator light and buzzard came on. I said my warning indicator and light, didn't I? So my warning indicator light and buzzard came on, which indicates that they are working correctly. I'm gonna now continue pumping my brakes and somewhere between 20 and 40 pounds, both my tractor and trailer brakes should pop out. All right, my tractor and trailer brake both popped out, which indicates my spring brakes are working properly. And that concludes my brake test. All right, so now I'm gonna to explain to you a little bit what we just did. So, <clears throat> what I'm talking about when I say, during the service brake test, when I say my steering wheel didn't pull to the left or to the right, which would indicate a brake out of adjustment. So if your brakes were adjusted like this, one of them was way down like this, and one of them was way out like this. And you hit your brakes. This one's gonna grab first because it's adjusted down closer, right? Mm -hmm. So that means your steering wheel is gonna pull this way. Okay. If that one was adjusted down, this one was way out, that one would grab first, which would mean your truck would pull that way when you hit your brakes. If they're adjusted evenly, they'll both grab at the same time. Your steering wheel doesn't pull to the left or to the right. So that's what you're saying when you're saying, my steering wheel did pull to the left or the right, which would indicate a breakout of adjustment. 
the warning indicator light and buzzer that came on at 60 pounds if you were driving down the road and that warning indicator light and buzzer came on that means you have an air leak somewhere if you don't pull over pretty quick and you continue losing air <clears throat> next somewhere between 20 and 40 pounds those two brakes are going to pop out and you're going and you're going to lock up going down the highway so that that's what that is for is an indicator light and buzzard that will come on to show you that you have an air leak somewhere okay so that's what we're doing when we're testing that when we're doing the the uh tug test so we're releasing uh, the tractor brake to test the trailer brakes. So these are applied, these are released. We're just giving a little tug just to make sure our trailer brakes are holding. Or vice versa, you're, you're releasing that one, leaving that one out, making sure your tractor brakes are holding. So that's all we're doing during the, during the, uh, the tug test. All right, so <clears throat> next after you, after you finish that part and you, you say that concludes my brake test, you're gonna say now I'm gonna start my truck back up and start my end cab inspection. So to do the end cab inspection, you can do it in any order you want to do it in, but I would suggest you do your seat belt and your three emergency devices first because they're really easy to forget because they're out of sight. So first off, I have my seat belt. It is not cut and it latches and unlatches properly. I have my three emergency devices. I have my spare fuses. They are right up here. My fuse box is behind the glove box. I have my three reflective triangles. They're red and orange in color, and they're properly mounted and secured in the side box. I have my fire extinguisher. It's also properly mounted and secured in the side box. It is not leaking, it's fully charged, and it has a 10 BC rating. <clears throat> Next, I have my two side mirrors. They're not cracked, they're clean, they're free of illegal stickers, and they're adjusted to me by me. I have my two side windows and my windshield. They are not cracked, they're clean, they're free of illegal stickers. I have my windshield wiper and my wiper blades. They are not bent or cut and they fit snugly against the windshield. My windshield wipers are working properly and my windshield washer is working properly. I have my steering wheel, it has no more than two inches of play. I have my city horn and my air horn, they're both working properly. I have my dash lights, they are working properly. I have my high beam indicator, it is working properly. My left turn signal indicator is working properly. My right turn signal indicator is working properly. And my four way flasher indicator are working properly. I have my RPM gauge, give it a little throttle, just make the hand move. I have my RPM gauge, it is working properly. My water temperature gauge is slowly rising, which means it's working properly. My fuel gauge is at the correct level and working properly. My voltage meter, I can push this plus sign on the steering wheel about three or four times. It will bring up my voltage meter. My voltage meter is between 13 and 14 volts, which indicates that it's working properly. My speedometer, I checked during the service brake test. It was working properly. My oil pressure gauge is at the correct level, which means it's working properly. And my primary and secondary air gauges, and this gauge here is going to be replaced. My primary and secondary air gauges are slowly rising, which means they're working properly. All right, and I work myself from left to right. These three gauges over here, you don't have to cover because they're not standard on every truck. They're extras, so those three you do not have to cover. All right, so now I work myself from left, from left to right. I'm gonna come on across. I'm gonna turn my defroster on. I put my hand up here. My defroster is blowing and working properly. I would turn my floor air on, my floor air is blowing and working properly, and I don't have any debris or anything in my floor that could roll underneath my pedals. And that concludes my in-cab inspection.